Today's Browns Report is presented to you by Aura. Our proud sponsor today is hooking you up with a free trial when you go to Aura.com slash chat sports. They're keeping you protected online, whether it's with your identity or your wallet. We're going to tell you more about their awesome services later on in the show. Speaking of the show, we've got the latest news and rumors. No, we don't. We've got some post-June 1st trade, uh, excuse me, free agent targets that maybe Andrew Barry with some extra dough in his pocket, will look around and go, hmm, I wonder if now I've got that near $10 million after cutting Austin Hooper and designating him as a post-June 1st cut, I might go out and drop some you know, cheddar down, spend some green, because the Browns, they've got a ton of cap space. That, that's not a doubt right there, okay? There is a lot of cap space for the Browns right here. $40.3 million, that's number one, in the NFL, the Carolina Panthers, 24 and a half. The Raiders in third with 22. The Chicago Bears have just north of $20 million. The Cowgirls, who, by the way, traded Amari Cooper because they didn't want to spend that money to him so they could allocate it elsewhere to Randy Gregory, but they ended up losing out on him. Yeah, they've got $20 million, and I bet they wish they had Amari Cooper back instead of an extra fifth-round pick in the draft. So this is the current cap space for the uh, Browns, uh, for the NFL. And the Browns, believe it or not, after signing a lot of players, Andrew Barry has been a wizard, and he's been able to maneuver some things around, pull some strings, and make it happen. Now, unfortunately... The Browns, according to a lot of reports out there, Brad Steinbrook and Woodnot reporting, they are not in the mix for Indomitian Sue. If you click down the video, hoping to see Sue, I, I, I bring you bad news. I, I wish it could be the case, but all the signs are indicating it's going to be a team maybe like the Raiders or the Titans that end up with Sue. But I've got five other names to keep an eye on for. So here are my five post-June 1st free agent targets. Will Fuller. The wide receiver who has gotten a ton of airtime, and he's been involved in all sorts of circles talking about the Browns and free agency. Ultimately, Andrew Barry, he seems rather content with the current group of wide receivers that the Browns have. He has sung their praises. He is very confident that when he goes out and he gets a $230 million quarterback, that's going to elevate the entire wide receiver room. And that's a fair point and assessment to make, right? That's why you get a guy like Deshaun Watson, because he can make a Donovan Peoples-Jones, an Anthony Schwartz, a David Bell look like players you have to pay a lot of money for. And you got them for cheap now. You've got wide receiver two, three, four on their rookie contracts. So if he doesn't want to spend that money there, and he's like, I just spent a ton of money on Deshaun Watson. Why do I got to spend a ton of money at a wide receiver? Well, you know Watson and Will Fuller go back. They overlapped for quite some time in Houston. Both first-round picks for the Texans, and both had great careers together. Now, the issue was they didn't overlap enough. The injuries for Will Fuller and a suspension here or there got in the way of what could have been a very good number two receiver behind DeAndre Hopkins, right? 22 touchdowns in 33 games. So, ultimately, I think what we've got to get a point, the point we've got to get to is, do you have faith? and Andrew Barry. If you do, like the video. If you're like, you know what? I trust the guy. If he doesn't think this team needs another wide receiver, damn it, this team doesn't need another wide receiver. Now, maybe he will feel a little differently if after June 1st, he's got some extra money and Will Fuller was looking for $7 million, and now he's looking for 4 He goes, I didn't like you for 7 but I love you for $4 million. Maybe we could see that happen. Next free agent target after June 1st, what about Deshaun Jackson? We keep it in the neighborhood of wide receivers because this is a player who is linked to the Browns. Earlier this offseason, there was some grumblings out there that maybe he'd want to come play for the Browns. Before we unpack this furthermore, I want to tell you all about our proud sponsor today, which is Aura. Financial fraud protection, identity theft protection, online and device security, plus family plans. If you got some young ones on the way, or by the way, an awesome feature there, you can set maximum limits on your credit card. So if someone in your household is spending too much on foreign leather goods, you can knock that down, just like how you can make sure the fraudsters and the scammers can't run up your credit card bill. We do everything online. We shop. We bank. Just do it safely now. Thanks to Aura. Start today with a 14-day free trial. Thanks to Aura.com slash chat sports. The link is in the comments and the description. 
make sure you get yourself hooked up. Going back to Deshaun Jackson, though. So he tweeted out, excuse me, he posted on Instagram this picture, this is a while ago, of a jersey edit of him in a Browns jersey, and Deshaun Watson being like, let's go, yes, come on, let's make it happen. So there's a little bit of interest, clearly, on the two sides. Jackson clearly would be open to coming to Cleveland. Deshaun Watson would be excited to have Deshaun Jackson come play for the Browns. Now, the last couple of seasons for Jackson, he's not the guy who helped beat the Giants with four touchdowns in the last eight minutes in that late December game, including the kickoff and the punt return at the end of the game. So he had a bit of a falling down, and that's fine because he's super-duper old. He's in his 30s. That, that's what happens. But I am personally, like, two touchdowns, 455 yard, 454 yards last season, that's fine for someone that age and switching teams midway through, which not a good move to abandon a Super Bowl winning team when you don't even have a ring. I'm passing on Jackson, though. Some people are a little more high on getting him. I'm not interested. I'm all for adding some veterans here and there, right? Especially on the defensive line, for example. But I like the idea of keeping this young wide receiver room a little younger and not tossing in a 35-year-old who might steal some snaps from players who have shown some real promise, like DPJ, or you're hoping the sky's the limit for David Bell, or you finally get to see what you'd all been hoping for out of Anthony Schwartz. Speaking of wide receivers, though, who is your favorite Browns wide receiver of all time? Light up the comment section with who your favorite Browns wide receiver is. I'm going to cheat and say Josh Cribbs. I know he's more of a return specialist than a wide receiver, but still, that's who my favorite is. Let me know who your favorite wide receiver is down below. Next, post-June 1st target, I got a twofer for the people. Pair of defensive tackles, Eddie Goldman and Linval Joseph. Very different points of their career. Goldman, still south of 30. Joseph, well north of it. And then there's this other side of the coin of, Matthew, the Browns are not interested in signing a defensive tackle. Or so we think thought at least, all right? So Field Yates, just the other day, putting this out, saying new Lions defensive lineman John Kaminsky uh, was a popular as player as he can remember on the waiver wire, yada, yada, yada. Why am I telling you about this? Because eight teams submitted a claim to get Kaminsky. One of those eight teams was the Browns. So there is a little part of Andrew Barry that is going, I'm not in love with the current interior defensive line. If I can find a cheap addition, I'll go that route. Now, he doesn't want to go the route of Akeem Hicks for $10 million like the Bucks did. That's way too high for him. But clearly, he is not set in stone on this group. So, what about Eddie Goldman or Linval Joseph? As more time passes and maybe their price tag drops, could Andrew Barry be interested in signing someone who, take Eddie Goldman, for example, second round pick, has shown some awesome years for the Bears, but last year, 2021, just a half a sack. Joseph, on the other hand, I know three tackles for loss, one sack. We're not jumping out of our chairs here. But he's been a very quiet, productive member, longtime player for the Vikings. He's been decent for being a 30-plus-year-old defensive tackle for the Chargers the last two seasons. Here's my take on the idea of signing another defensive tackle. Wait until after mandatory minicamp. You know, that's coming up in about two weeks now. Wait until Barry gets a better look after seeing all the OTAs, a mandatory minicamp. And even though it's not live drills or not pads going on, he's going to have a better sense of where things stand for that interior defensive line. And if Elliott and Winfrey and Bryant and Togiai are coming along nicely, or if they're not looking like they're about to break out onto the scene and emerge as two cal starting caliber players. Andrew Barry's not in a rush to get a defensive tackle. He's kind of shown that. He kind of like half-assed it last year with the Maliks, and that, they didn't lose games because of them, that's for sure. So I think he's content on the way it is, but if the price is good enough and the players aren't looking good in camp, he might be persuaded to pick up the phone and call someone's agent. So we have a Ravens channel here at Chat Sports, and the host of it, Jeremy Beadling, well, he said some very unkind things. Here's what he said. The Browns are a poverty franchise. Lamar Jackson is going to roll over the Browns in 2022 and prove to be the best quarterback in the AFC North. Well, I bet it's going to be his last year in the AFC North because he's off to Miami this, uh, after this season. So if you hate the Ravens, if you're mad at Modell for, for moving the team to Baltimore, 
or you just want to get some free Browns coverage. Whatever it may be, you're going to fit in very nicely here at the channel. Hit that big red button, smash it, tap it, you know, just lick it a little bit. Whatever it may be, get yourself locked in with free daily Browns coverage. My last free agent target is Trey Hopkins, an offensive guard, and I am boring myself to sleep, so we're not doing it. Give me in, Dominican Sue. We're changing it up. I told you at the beginning of the show not to get your hopes up, but he's come back from the dead, and Ndamukong Sue is on the list because how could you not include him? He has been the heartbeat of this show, it felt like, for the last two weeks. Am I swinging for the fences here? Without a doubt. But you know what? It's the NFL offseason. Let's have some fun. Let's talk about a 35-year-old guy who had six sacks last year. He's had 12 over the combined last two seasons. And Dominican Sue has shown, despite being a little up there in the age column, he is still a very productive member, a very productive player. And like I said before, if mandatory minicamp isn't pretty, if Jordan Elliott and Taven Bryant are not looking like they can at least band-aid together a defensive line, and then Dominican Sue goes, you know what? I've made a lot of money in my career. I got overpaid in Miami. I want to win another ring. I think the Browns are the closest team to doing that. I'll take the vet minimum, toss some incentives my way, and let's dance, Cleveland. I think that is the only route you see Sue come to the Browns. Barry's not going to, you know, back up the truck and give him a bunch of Benjis. But if the defensive line, like I said, isn't all that in the midst of training camp and whatnot of the offseason, maybe Sue on a vet minimum deal, would be interested in coming back. So if you want to see Sue suit up in brown and orange, orange and brown, type me down below in the comment section. Let's show the guy some love. Let, let's speak it into existence if you want to see Indomitian and Sue come, at least for training camp. If he comes and he's fat and out of shape, fine. You, you cut him, right? You, you, you're not married to the guy. He can be Andrew Billings all over again. But at least bring in some extra competition to the position group to get the best possible starters out there because this is a team ready to win now. And I'm not interested in punting on good players because I want to see if Tommy Togiai can develop. No, I'm going to pass on that.